Hello everyone and welcome to Metagame Mastery, where it's not just about what the card does, but how it impacts the game. Battlebond preview season is finally upon us, and there are amazing new cards for Commander, including new Partner Commanders and Planeswalker Commanders. If you enjoy our content, click that subscribe button so you get access to all our latest videos. And if you want to help the channel, there is an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. Any purchases made once clicking on that link, a small percentage comes back to help the channel. Without further ado, big time, go time. Let's go. First, let's take a look at the new twist on the partner mechanic. Partner cards will always be found together in booster packs, so there's never a chance of you having one and not the other. Also, when one enters the battlefield, target player may search their library for its partner and put it into their hand, allowing the first one to effectively replace itself and ensuring that you always have access to the great card interactions between the two. Now, for commander purposes, it gets even better. Much like the Commander 2016 co partners, you can use their combined color identity to build your deck, and both can be played out of the command zone. Very powerful. Unlike the Commander 2016 partners, which are entirely interchangeable with any other partner commanders, these ones will only be able to partner with very specific cards. So for example, Pure Imaginative Rascal is three CMC, two colorless and a green for a one one legendary human partner with Toothy Imaginary Friend, which I also have on the screen here so that you can see their card interactions. If one or more counters would be put on a permanent, your team controls that many plus one of each of those kinds of counters is put on the permanent instead. This card is actually really sweet. It's like a hardened skills you can commit, play from your command zone, and it's also got a broader effect, not just affecting plus one, plus one counters, although it does that, it also affects artifacts with charge counters. It affects enchantments that accumulate counters. And most importantly, it affects loyalty counters on planeswalkers. That's huge. Also, he has Toothy, imaginary friend, who's four CMC, three colorless, and a blue for a 1-1 one, one legendary illusion that partners with pure imaginative rascal. Whenever you draw a card, put a plus one, plus one counter on Toothy, imaginary friend. When Toothy leaves the battlefield, draw a card for each plus one, plus one counter on it. So in that regard, he's like a monocolored, lower scale codal, and kind of like a Chasm Skulker, both of which are very powerful cards. They can grow very quickly, especially if Pure Imaginative Rascal is already on the battlefield, allowing you to get two plus one plus one counters for each card you draw. And then when he leaves the battlefield, which is a very important distinction, with the commander replacement, with the command zone replacement rule, if he were to die, he would not get, and go back to your command zone, you would not get the die's trigger. But since this just says leaves the battlefield, if you send him back to your command zone, you will get access to his second ability, which makes him ideal for the commander format. They've been very careful with how they word these abilities so that you get maximum value in commander. That's why this set is going to be so freaking powerful. Also, we have Pierre's Whim, four CMC, three colorless and a green for a sorcery. For each player, choose friend or foe. Each friend searches their library for a land card, puts it into the battlefield tapped, then shuffles their library. Each foe sacrifices an artifact or enchantment they control. So this is a cool card because you can always choose yourself as a friend, getting the positive benefit, and all you get exponential value targeting all of your opponents as foes. You can also be very political, selecting specific opponents that you may or may not have an allegiance with and targeting them as a friend. Very flexible card, 
effectively a rampant growth plus uh, edict effect for your opponent's artifacts and enchantments that hits the entire board. Very cool card. Doubling Caesar is finally being reprinted! At last, at last, at last. If you're not familiar with Doubling Season, it is 5 CMC for colorless and a green for an enchantment. If an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many of those tokens instead. If an effect would put one or more counters on a permanent you control, it puts twice that many of those counters on that permanent instead. With new art, stunning art, it I'm going to put them side by side on the screen here so that you can compare. This card is phenomenal. Uh, not only is it a parallel lives, but at the same time, it also makes it so that all your planeswalkers into the battlefield with double their starting loyalty, usually allowing them to ultimate right out the gate. When Atraxa was previewed for Commander 2016, this card shot up to being $80 in value. It has since gone back down to about 65, but we've desperately needed a reprint for Commander, and it's here. It's finally here. Stunning Reversal is an amazing new card. It's four CMC, three colors and a black for an instant. The next time you would lose the game this turn, instead draw seven cards and your life total becomes one. Exile Stunning Reversal. This card is particularly good in playgroups where your opponents combo out. Instead of trying to interrupt their combo, let it go off. Let it happen. Let them play out their cards, and then all of a sudden, boom, you're fine, and you've got a whole new grip. Amazing card will definitely see play in competitive EDH. Here we have another new pair of partner commanders. Virtus the Veiled is 3 CMC, 2 colors, and a black for a 1 1 legendary Azra assassin. Partner with Gorm the Great. He has Death Touch, and whenever he deals combat damage to a player, that player loses half their life rounded up. Dang! <laughs> That's so powerful. And then uh, there's Gorm the Great. He's 4 CMC, 3 colors, and a green for a 2 7 legendary giant warrior. Partner with Virtus the Veiled. He has Vigilance. Gorm the Great must be blocked if able, and he must be blocked by two or more creatures if able. So basically, he draws potential blockers away to help sneak Virtus the Veiled through. Now, he's not nearly as powerful as Virtus is on his own. That said, they make for an interesting pair. It's a cool card interaction. I think Virtus will see play on his own in commander decks just for the fact that he can knock opponent's life totals in half with just one swing. He also creates a two card kill combo with Archfiend of Despair, who is eat CMC, six colorless, black, black for a six, six demon with flying. Your opponents cannot gain life and at the beginning of each end step, each opponent loses life equal to the life that player lost this turn. Very powerful. Not only does this card combo with anything, and there are many, whether it be Quintus Spike, whether it be Heartless Hedasugu, many, many cards that knock your opponent's life total in half. This makes them kill spells but on top of that it only affects your opponents all these downsides only affect your opponent look for this guy to be cheated into play whether it be via reanimation Kali of the vast this guy is a force to be reckoned with now not all partner cards are going to be commanders in fact we have two non-legendary ones here that are going to make for an interesting combination in the limited format. Proud Mentor is 3 CMC, 2 colors, and a white for a 1-1 one, one human warrior. Warriors are getting a ton of tribal support in this format. I'm just going to throw that out there. He partners with Impetuous Protege. 
and you can pay one white, tap them to tap target creature. This is a great stall card. Before your opponent can declare attackers, you go ahead and tap down their strongest creature. And then Impetuous Protege is three CMC, two colorless and a red for a zero four human warrior. He partners with Proud Mentor and whenever Impetuous Protege attacks, it gets plus X plus zero until end of turn. Rax is the greatest power among tapped creatures your opponents control. So whenever you tap down on your opponent's side, he gets to uh, crack back with that much damage. It's a very powerful combination because not only are you preventing the attack, you're also preventing the block. Sweet card interaction here. Very good and limited. Soul Blade Renewer is 5 CMC, 4 colorless, and a green for a 2 2 Elf Warrior. Partner with Soul Blade Corruptor. When Soul Blade Renewer enters the battlefield, support 2, which is, of course, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on up to 2 other target creatures. Soul Blade Corruptor is 5 CMC, 4 colorless, and a black for a 3 3 Human Warrior. Partner with Soul Blade Renewer. Death Touch. Whenever a creature with plus 1 plus one counter on it attacks one of your opponents that creature gains death touch until end of turn so more warriors for warrior tribal at the same time notice that these are soul blades i get the impression that the flavor of this set is going to veer towards psionics which if you've ever played dungeons and dragons psionics is a way of taking psychic abilities as an interesting twist on magical effects These two together make for a very interesting tandem, allowing you to put plus one, plus one counters on creatures that you already have in play, and at the same time, powering them up so that they get death touch whenever they attack. Augur Spree is getting a reprint. It's three CMC, one colorless, black, red for an instant. Target creature gets plus four, minus four until end of turn. So, the plus four doesn't really do a whole lot in most cases, although I suppose it would uh, work out just fine with, say, Gorm. But usually this is used as an instant kill spell. Centaur Healer is also being reprinted. It's three CMC, one colorless, green-white for a 3-3 three, three Centaur Cleric. When it enters the battlefield, you gain three life. For limited purposes, this is fine. It's entirely on curve. So you get a 3-3 three, three for 3, and you get the upside of some incidental life gain as well. Soaring Show-Off is a new card. It's 3 CMC, 2 colorless, and a blue for a 2-2 two, two bird warrior with flying. When it enters the battlefield, each player draws a card. So this actually plays into the broader group hug theme that we're going to be seeing more of. In Two-Headed Giant, it's nice because it affects you and your partner. And in this case, the card will always replace itself. It also has the downside of helping your opponents. Outside of Two-Headed Giant, I, I hate Group Hug, so I would never play it. <laughs> but if Group Hug is your thing, you're going to get a ton of great cards in this set. Dagger Dome Imp is two cmc one colorless and a black for a one one imp with flying and lifelink so there's a lot of value there you've got evasion and you've got lifelink if you can suit this guy up with any kind of equipment or auras he could potentially become a force to be reckoned with doomed dissenter is getting reprinted already uh from the amonkhet block it's two cmc one colorless and a black for a one one human when he dies, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. And Doomed Traveler is getting a reprint. Classic value card. One white mana for a 1-1 one, one human soldier. When he dies, create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. Definitely more powerful than the previous card. This guy is going to do work for you in limited. Eager Construct is two colorless mana for a 2-2 artifact creature construct. 
When it enters the battlefield, each player may scry one. So we're going back to that group hug effect. But well, this guy's a great curve filler just in general. Two co colorless mana for a 2-2 two -two that can go into any deck is really solid in a limited format. Expedition Raptor is 5 CMC, 3 colorless, white white for a 2-2 two -two flying bird. And when it enters the battlefield, support 2, which of course is put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on up to 2 other target creatures. So you're paying 5 mana for 4 power and toughness, 2 of which has evasion. It's okay, it'll do work, especially if there's a very heavy support mechanic. If you're playing with plus 1 plus 1 counters in limited, this is a fine pickup. Fertile Ground is a great reprint with classic art here. It's two CMC, one colorless, and a green for an enchant aura. You enchant a land, and whenever it's tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional one mana of any color. Very powerful mana ramp, very difficult to remove, and it's also very good mana fixing. Peregrine Drake is actually being reprinted. If you've played Pauper before, you know how broken this card is. It had to be banned. It's part of so many infinite mana combos. It's 5 CMC, 4 colorless, and a blue for a 2-3 Drake with flying. And when it enters the battlefield, untap up to 5 lands. This thing gets out of control fast. Rushblade Commander is 2 CMC for a black, red, 2-2 two, two, Azra Warrior. Warriors your team controls have haste. Very cool tribal warrior lord. It's on curve as a bear, but at the same time has a very powerful effect for all of your warriors. And Mindblade Render is 2 CMC, 1 colorless and a black for 1-3 Azra Warrior. Whenever your opponents are dealt combat damage, if any of that damage was dealt by a warrior, you draw a card and you lose one life. Very powerful, repeatable card draw. You could potentially get one to two cards every single turn. Two cards with double strike, of course. This thing is going to be an absolute house in Warrior Tribal. Absolute staple, must have. Huddle Up is going to be the first card we look at with the new assist mechanic. It's 3 CMC, 2 colorless and a blue for a sorcery. And assist means any player can pay the colorless mana for the spell's cost. Two target players each draw a card. This is really good for two-headed giant because it's just two target players, right? You and your partner. At the same time, in say commander, this is interesting for political purposes because you could potentially pay one blue and coerce in a political game an opponent to pay the two mana and in exchange you can have them draw two cards. If you like political games of commander you're going to love assist cards outside of that they have no use they're just not good <laughs> fan favorite takes the assist mechanic to another level you see he's four cmc three colorless and a black for a two two human rogue with assist but for two colorless mana he gets plus one plus one until end of turn any player may activate this ability allowing players to pump up your guy and have him win in combat against say a problematic creature on the board or just allowing them to dump mana into him and force through additional damage on say a mutual enemy. Dwarven Lightsmith is 6 CMC, 5 colorless and a white for a 3-4 dwarf cleric with assist. When he enters the battlefield, creatures on your team get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Very powerful anthem effects. You can drop this guy pretty early. Uh, drop him, say, on turn three and anthem your existing creatures. 
he's going to be a force to be reckoned with in limited. Charging Binox is 8 CMC, 7 colorless, and a green for a 7-5 beast with assist and trample. So this is a cool card, especially in limited. You, both you and your partner can pay for to get a 7-5 trampler on the board early. Outside of that, I don't think anyone would want to uh, help chip in mana to get this guy out early. Play the game is 8 CMC, 6 colorless, white white for a sorcery with assist. Exile all non-land permanents. Dang. Absolutely super powerful card. This one will probably see play in Commander, especially when one person's board state is getting wildly out of control. People are looking to draw into a board wipe. Even if you don't have the mana, you can convince other players to chip in mana for this. Very powerful removal spell. Finally, this is what we've all been waiting for, the new Planeswalker Commanders, originally previewed by Wedge at the Mana Source and the Professor at Telerian Community College. Rowan Kenrith is 6 CMC, 4 colorless, red red for a legendary Planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 4. Plus 2. During target player's next turn, each creature that player controls attacks if able. Minus two. She deals three damage to each tapped creature that player controls. Her ultimate is minus eight. Target player gets an emblem whenever you activate an ability that isn't a mana ability, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. Partner with Will Kenrith and she can be used as your commander. Will Kenrith is 6 CMC, 4 colorless, blue blue for a legendary planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 4. He has a plus 2 ability until your next turn. Up to 2 target creatures each have base power and toughness 0, 3, and lose all abilities. Losing all abilities is super powerful. Minus 2. Target player draws 2 cards until your next turn. Instant sorcery and Planeswalker spells, target player cast costs two colorless, less two cast. And then his ultimate, target player gains an emblem. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. Partner with Rowan Kenrith and Will Kenrith can be your commander. Both of these can be your commander. They work amazingly in tandem with each other. Their abilities work amazingly in tandem with uh, just the abilities on their card, allowing you to double activated abilities, including off of your Planeswalkers, allowing you to double your instances of sorceries as you storm off with his minus two ability, reducing the cost of all your instances of sorceries, allowing you to not only force your opponent to attack in with all their creatures, but you can also turn those creatures into 0 3 creatures until your next turn, and then you can turn around and board wipe the creatures that they just attacked with since they'll be tapped. These guys are super synergistic, super powerful. They're going to be amazing in Commander, and they're going to be way, way more amazing in Limited for this format. These guys are sick and awesome cards, probably the premier cards of this set. That's it for today. If you enjoy our content, click that subscribe button so you get access to all the latest Magic the Gathering news. And if you're looking to support the channel, check out our description below. There's an Amazon affiliate link. Any purchases made there, a small percentage comes back to help the channel. This has been Metagame Mastery. Peace.